After many years of putting it off, today I'm finally getting started on my American Bladesmith Society performance test knife. But before we get started, let's go down to the anvil and talk a little bit about the requirements and why we need to do this. So the American Bladesmith Society has specific requirements for the performance test knife. When you join the ABS to become a German Smith, you either have to wait three years or do two years and a introduction to bladesmithing by one of the accredited classes put on by the ABS. So when you want to become a German Smith, first you have to make a performance test knife. It has to pass those tests. Then you have to build five knives and present them at the blade show to judges from the ABS to get your journeyman smith stamp. But you can find all this information out on the American Bladesmith Society website. But the requirements for the performance test knife, it has to be no longer than 15 inches overall length. The blade can't be wider than two inches, and the blade can't be longer than 10 inches from either the guard or the end of your handle. This blade doesn't have to be anything fancy, it has to be something that will perform the task at hand. So the requirements include cutting a one inch free hanging rope in half in one swing. You get one shot at it. Then you have to chop a two by four in half twice. Then it has to be able to shave hair. Then the most critical task is putting it in a vise and bending it 90 degrees without breaking. It can have a little crack, but it can't break. So this is the knife I've designed for that specific test. It doesn't have to be a specific blade design. It just has to meet the size requirements. But you want it to be able to perform that test. A lot of people use 5160 for this. I'm gonna be using 1084, and I've got a piece of 3 1084. I think it's an inch and a half wide bar that we're gonna start forging to make this knife. And we'll go through the whole build, including the test. So hang around. Okay, got the blade forged, and I went ahead and cleaned the scale off of it, all but where these bevels are slightly forged in. Like I said before, this blade is specifically designed for this test, so it's not something I'd necessarily build for everyday use. Right now, as far as perimeters go, this is where our handle will start. The blade is just slightly under 10 inches, which is what we want. Overall length is just an eighth under 15 inches, which is also meeting perimeters. Rest of this will be handled, of course. 
Now it's about an inch and a half here and it kind of tapers down, which is another thing I want. And we got a slightly forged distal taper in and I will finish that when I start doing the grind. I will actually grind in a little more distal taper. So I want this blade to be tapering in both directions toward the point. So I have marked this edge. I'm gonna mark some center lines and start doing our rough grind. Then we'll move to heat treating. So let's get some lines marked on this thing. Okay, we've got the blade ground, but you can see I left a little bit of flat on each side. And this will help me after I harden the blade and before it cools to put it in between a couple pieces of aluminum plate and keep it straight while it cools down. I've got some pinholes marked out, get those drilled and we're gonna start the heat treating process. I'll do some normalization and grain refinement and then we'll do our quench and temper. So I've left about, 30 thousandths of, of the edge on here. And then we'll finish grind after tempering. Then we'll start our test. So right now I'm gonna get these two holes drilled and start heat treating. We're going to start off our thermal cycling phase at 1575. Now, according to Dr. Laren Thomas, you could go as much as 100 degrees higher than 1600 degrees without having grain growth, as long as you don't spend an hour doing it. 10 minute hold should be fine. But I find this set point around 1575 to 1600 degrees works pretty well for me. So what you're trying to do here with thermal cycling is to get your carbides evenly distributed in your steel. Through forging and the stresses of forging and all that stuff, the carbides are not evenly dispersed. With these steps, you wanna to try to get them back evenly dispersed to prepare your steel to harden or austenitize. We'll do a grain refinement cycle, and then we'll probably do a DET anneal. Now, I highly recommend Dr. Laren Thomas's book, Knife Steel Engineering. I have a link in my bio if you wanna get one but I highly recommend his book. If you don't know who Dr. Laren Thomas is, he's the son of the legendary Devin Thomas, one of the first I ever seen to make stainless Damascus. Anyway, Dr. Laren Thomas has a great list of credentials. He is a metallurgist in the automotive industry. He also developed MagnaCut, which is a new knife steel that is a very high performance steel. So we got our blade ground, and now what I've got here is a pan of sand and water. And we're gonna soften the back of this knife. This will help 
in our bend portion of the test. You want to have a soft back. We're going to do what's called blue backing. So we'll blue the back of this knife with a torch. So I went ahead and cleaned the blade up, put a handle on it, put an edge on it. And now we're ready to start our test. The rules say we have to cut a one inch rope in one try. Then we have to cut a two by four and half twice. Then it still has to shave. And then we do our 90 degree bend test. And another thing to note is we can't retouch the edge. Once we start the test of cutting, that's it. Then we do our bend test. So right now, I'm gonna go ahead and do our rope cut. shaving no deformed edge it looks good it's time to bend it Well, I lucked out, I guess. If I had it to do over it again, one of the things I would do is make my handle a little thicker. It was a little small as far as, it was a little too narrow. Um, lengthwise, it was fine, but it was just a little narrow, kind of hard to hold doing the chopping. It could be a little wider, but I really like the narrow taper for the bend test. Um, it worked fine. No cracks, no issues. Looks like the heat treat was spot on. I mean, it's still shaving. You can see the hair popping there. But um, I may even try to straighten it up. Anyway, I hope you got something out of this. And uh, that was a practice knife. I gotta make the real one next. I'll probably make two more and test another one. But anyway, hope that helps somebody out there. And we'll see you on the next one where I'll be making some feather Damascus. Thanks for watching.